the previous video, we created a Mernstack application and we deployed it onto Heroku. But in this one, we'll dockerize that project. So if you haven't watched the first video or you can't follow along, I would recommend you to watch that video first and later come to this video. The prerequisites for this video would be you need to have a React project and the code structure would also be be the same. So I'll also leave the link in the description for the Docker template that we're gonna create and also the file structure that would be needed to follow along. And I hope you enjoy it. So let's get started. Here we are in code. Let's get started with the dockerization of our Merns app. Okay. So here I have opened up the previous video code that we left off. Okay, so in the previous video, for those who are just seeing this for the first time, we had created a application, a simple post application. Let me show it to you. How does it look? Okay. So here I'm going to start my back end first. So let's say yarn start. And here, okay, so everything's going correctly. Yarn start. No, it should be okay I'm in client here so as you can see we have got a code structure going on so everything that's related to the client side application which is the react application with express and that's what we're using as a web framework so it's it's all here and then we have got the node JS backend which are we are using for API's so as you can see we have got uh, the server running and then we have got some API route set up okay so that's where we left off so let's start the yarn this is client okay and it should start now yeah so in the development phase as you can see I've got the react here and it says that this page is being is using the development build of react so in the development build we have it running on port 3000 that's the default for react application and then we have got the server running at 5000 so here okay this should be this it says not found Okay, so that's because in the config.env, I set this to production. It should be development. Let's save this and restart the application. And let's, let's also restart the here. Okay, now it should be fine. So we're running the connected to database. Let's restart again. And it should reload. Okay. This should be okay. Now everything is fine. So we have got the server running here at 5000 and then we have got the React application running at 3000. Okay. So in the previous video, I we, we deployed it onto the production, which was on Heroku. Now Heroku acts as a Git as well, so it's got so many features. So this this is the application that we built in the previous one video, and as you can see, it's got a lot of features. It it gives us metrics. It's it also has a pipeline that we can create. So each time we upload something to GitHub, we can build it and deploy it onto the production. So it's got its own pipeline, right? But in this video, I'm gonna dockerize this application that we built so that you, you can deploy it onto like virtually mo um, anything. Some say you can deploy it on a potato, 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 if it has a CPU stuck onto it. Okay, so what is Docker? That's the big question, okay? Let's see. 
So throw this out. Okay. Let's go to Wikipedia. So Docker is a platform service that what it does is basically it encapsulates your application and make sure that it runs anywhere that ha can has enough memory and enough uh, capacity to host it okay so that's what it is so normally we create a docker build and we can push that onto the host containers which in turn deploys our application onto the production. In the production, we can pull it after we have built it. So it's it's an awesome awesome thing, and you, sh you can learn it by going to docker.com. So to start with that, I'm going to need you guys to firstly have Docker installed. So Docker Desktop. Docker Desktop is fine. You can install it for Mac. That's what I have here. I've installed it here, and it's running. Or you or you can install it for Windows or whatever. You can also use the CLI, which I'm going to be using this time because I'm not much of a UI guy. Okay, so let's get started. To start off, any Docker uh, application you, you need to containerize. First, first thing you need to do is create a new Docker file. So Docker file is basically, basically a text-based file which contains metadata and commands basically so the commands telling how you are gonna build your image so in docker we need to build an image which we can later deploy onto the server so as you can see I have several images here at least yeah and these images can later be sent up to the docker hub which i am not signed in so what a docker hub basically is it's a git for docker docker hub so docker hub actually contains pre-built images for you guys so that if you want to like create a mongodb database or you want to run redis or you want to run a node you can simply click on any one of these and you can cr create a image out of docker that they have pre-built for you guys and it handles most of the things but we are gonna create one from scratch so the first command that you need is what docker image are you gonna build which in our case is gonna be a node docker image because we are working with the MERN stack so the command we need to type is from and you can see here we have got the base image here so we are going to be using the node base image to build our own docker okay so let's get started with by typing just node so by default if you don't pass in the next parameter which is after this and which is the tag the tag here is the versioning by default if you don't type anything it will default to the latest tag which is will which will be the latest version of node but in our case let's close this let's close this i built the previous application by, by using node version 12 so here's this is the one we are going to use so we're telling docker that from this so we need to get this from the docker hub we want to create a image Okay, next step is to create a working directory. So where do you want to store all these data, all these dependencies? That's where Docker will run. So let's create that. The command is working directory and the directory path. I'll just keep it to slash application. So we'll create an app folder here. Okay, it's app. Next, since it's a node application and this is going to be the package.json. We have got a lot of dependencies that we need for this to run properly. So let's first get, we need to install all the dependencies from node. To, to, to do that, we can do copy. And make sure all the commands are 
like uppercased because it's a case sensitive file so what we need is the package package dot json file and where do you want to copy this to that's the second parameter here so we want to copy it to the current working directory so it'll be app slash here in the app now this command works fine if it's you've got just one package.json file but if you got if you've got like more than one if you got like package one package two package three so for that you need to do is use a wildcard which is which i'm going to use here it's be, going to be the star star okay what star does is it acts as a wildcard and it gets all the files that's got package in front of it and it copies them to the current working directory which is here the next command would be to of course run yar install so i'm going to type in run and command parameter command is going to be yarn and the second parameter that we want to do is install now what this command will do it'll install all the dependencies that are there in package.json and it will also create a new lock file so yarn lock file this is where all the dependencies version and all that are there and also in credit integrity to check whether the installation is correct okay so let's save that now since we have installed this this will also install a node modules so these files here now let's copy those as well copy them out copy from source which is going to be current working directory and destination it's also current working directory okay now we have copied everything from here to here since that includes the node modules that's going to be fine now as i told you before that this is a react application and it's got an api running so for sure we'll have some environmental variables so this is for my MongoDB, which I have got running and which is handling all my data. I think it's somewhere. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm using MongoDB Atlas. So this is the connection part and I'm also using Mongoose to help me with that. And to connect it, we are going to need the username and password which are sensitive information and I didn't want to hard code them so I put them in the config.env and since it's sensitive information we don't want them up in the Git, github or any repository that you're using so we also add same command in here so it'll be star.env so we don't want any env files there it also has it here local development production local so that's that but we just have dot env for making it sure okay let's save this and let's get back so how do you pass the environmental variables then so to do that the command is env and here you can set your environmental variables so i'll, I'll make it easy for myself okay here so what i'm gonna do is copy the them like this and remove this and set it to a default value which will be the user so it'll be root let's set it to root and the password let's set the password as well it's e and b mongo pass let's set it to pass as the default value hey chill password the last one is so these are like the lesser important values in my like for me so instead of t like randomizing them i'll just leave them to default so this is the data real database name so in my mongodb mongodb it keeps logging me out but that's fine that's security thing my session usually expires I'm gonna show you the database and how that's being handled okay so here here I have connected 
the MongoDB Atlas. I'm currently using the free version. And it's being held on AWS, Singapore, Southeast One. And here you can see I've got a database named Stone. And I've got a bunch of posts in there. So this that's the name of this database. The part is the one I'm using for like uh, handling where my MongoDB database should be running. And here the node ENB, since this is gonna be deployed on product onto production, I'm gonna set it to production. Okay, so these are all of the environmental variables that I need. And they are also here, but we are not going to upload this file as well to, to GitHub. So this is where we'll pass them. And lastly, we let's make this a string. Okay. It doesn't really, really uh, change much, but let's do that. Okay. Lastly, we need to export a part, expose a part. So to expose a part, you allow incoming traffic from that part. So if you don't do this line, this won't work because you won't be able to access your backend. And I'm only exposing one part, but I'm using two as you can see. This is going to be 3000 and this is going to be 5000. But the way I have set things up in server.js so if my production env is from production i'm going to be using a express and i'm going to be serving the data and serving the application from the build folder so which is here and the build folder gets built when you once you build your client so that you can do like i'll, I'll show it to you so if you go yarn build once you build, it creates a smaller, compact, and optimized version of your application. And it'll create a build folder, which, which, which will have all your data and your UI. So as you can see, it creates a compact version to save space and optimization. So this is where we want our data to go from. So we'll be served from. Let's delete that. We won't be needing it. Okay, so in, in Docker, we need to exp we are gonna expose only the five thousand, only the backend, and we are gonna be serving static content from there. The next step would be, it's oh five thousand. The next step would be to, of course, we we want to run, so it'll be cmd, and the first command this. This will execute a command so this is the executable so yarn is an executable you can also use npm depending on how, if you're comfortable which one you're comfortable with it's pretty much the same to me the last command is start so the, it's the same command that we would use to run our backend okay so let's see what this command does it's declared over here i'm going to close this so yarn start Okay, this I'll write again. And this script as well, this was used when we were deploying it onto Heroku. But that's not what we are doing here. So let's move that. Okay, I'm saving it. So what yarn start does, it asks nodemon to start server.js. And what nodemon does, it it's like a hot reload utility, you can say. It checks for changes in any JavaScript file or MJS file or JSON file and if something has changed it restarts the server so it's something like node.server.js but uh, with the hot reload functionality but the problem here is that if we start node one server we haven't built the client application yet so there won't be any build build function okay so it'll be like something like this something like setting setting this to production production and if I start it now it'll say running production running on port 5000 but what see let's see what happens if I run it 
and here we go it'll say not found because it's trying to look for the built directory but that's not there because we haven't built it yet correctly so let's change it back to development save okay so how do we solve this problem so there are many ways you can go around this you can create two separate scripts of docker for your client and your back end and then use a docker compose to create two separate containers running as in a combined container something like that so it is a better way to go about but i'm trying to keep it simple so here's how i'm gonna solve it i'm gonna go into package.json and in start instead of start script i'm gonna create a new one i'm gonna call it docker star a build build the client okay docker build the client and what this is gonna do is it's gonna change the directory so first of all let's set the npm to false so what that means is we need to let's let me let me check I'm not good with so it's something like npm underscore config underscore production this goes to false I'm not good at spelling so I'll need to check that npm I think it's correct okay so we'll set it to false because once npm is in production it doesn't allow to run any scripts so we need to first set it to false then run some scripts so let's run cd to client client so that's we are changing directory into the client folder next we want to do is yarn install to install all the dependencies in this package.json we have got two of them and it'll install all the dependencies that we have not many but it will need them anyway so let's go back yarn install and the next thing we want it to do is yarn build now you can do it simultaneously uh, like uh, you have you have to wait for yarn install first before yarn building it so i think this will work let's let's see so we have got a command that builds it okay but if we can only call one command from docker file so it, it can either be yarn start or it can be this one so if you try to add another command you can do like cmd and as you can see that it only allows if you can if you go like cd that's not executable so yarn and you can go build yarn build and you can go current working directory which is prefix or yeah so the point is you can't do that it won't allow you to because it'll say that this you have multiple commands going on here you need to provide a default one so this is not possible what is possible is you create another script so you can create docker start server here and you can go yarn start so yarn start and you can build another one so docker uh, let's name it build web app okay and you can go con currently concurrently this concurrently allows us to run multiple commands simultaneously yeah i think simultaneously so the, it'll be yarn 
first we need to build the client so let's do that yarn build the client and close and next what we want to do i think this needs a bracket and start and flow okay so next is yarn so instead of doing this i'll just yarn start here okay start here and close this command okay now we can do this one so instead of doing that we can change this to yarn build web app so that's it so what this command will do it's it'll first go and run this and then run this the problem here exists that what if um, while this is executing this finished executing so the server has started but the client application has not yet done being built so that's also another benefit of nodemon of using nodemon is because even if the, there was a problem with the javascript or uh, there was a problem with that once the change a change will occur in the nodemon it will restart itself so eventually it will start restart until that client has been done building okay so that's it i think so let's call this command instead of running that just start okay let's let's call it docker okay where is it so it's this one and instead of here we're gonna run that build web app okay so to test it as i told you you'll need docker cli so it's let's let's kill this first okay so let's go docker you can check the versioning so i'm using version 20 and to build this one i'll need some things so docker build command and let's check what it has to offer so let's increase that so as you can see we have got a multiple flags going on here so we've got the file string we have got depend a lot of things so this one you can learn more about them at docker.com you can read through their documentation and it should be fine but what's what we are gonna use is the tag list the tag so the tag is a name that we can set for our docker image so let's use that so i'm gonna type docker docker build and i'm gonna give my docker image a name i'm gonna call it mern mern stack web okay and next the last one is I'm, I'm gonna give it a path so as you can see you have got options path or URL or whatever so I'm gonna give it a path this path will be to my docker file that has all the commands it needs to build it so which where where is it so you can either do a full path but as as you can see I'm already in the Mern application so for me to run it i won't need all this i can simply do the current working directory which is here and it should start so as you can see it has started building an an image for me so it's it started by downloading the node version which is here so it started by downloading 12.19.0 from the docker hub and it's transferred all that and it's copied package.json file and it found it and it ran yarn install if it didn't find the package.json file and you just type yarn install i'm thinking it'll throw an error so it's good thing that it didn't do that it installed everything it ran yarn install and it copied everything to the 
current working directory, which was app. I think, yeah, it's app. So now it's exporting to layers. So you, I think you should be able to see it in images anytime now. Here it is. So it has created one, a new image with the tag of this. And it's also got an image ID. The size it is a big bit big because it's the whole application with API and it's got the application itself. So you can run it here as well. You can run it with by just giving it a name. You can go, go your stone app, right? Or you and you can pass it with a terminal mapping. You can map the 5000 to 5000 depending on how you want it. But since we also need to pass in the environmental variables, right, which we specified in the Docker file, we need to pass these as well. We'll be running it from the command prompt. And how do you do that? Okay. To do that, you go, you go type in Docker and the command is run. Let's check what it offers. So it's got a lot more options than your previous one. So you can check what you want to do here. So I want to map the ports. So where is that? Mm -hmm. Publish list contains published containers post to the host. So that's what we want here, right? So I'll do slash P and I want my port 5000 because that's what we're using. I want to map external to internal. So these 5000 don't have to be the same one. You can either map 80 to 5000. You can do it the other way around. But I'm going to keep it simple and map the same one. What else do we need? Next, we want to pass the, the RM flag. So there are a few more flags which I can't seem to find. Here, I'm going to also use the remove flag. What it does is automatically removes the container when it exits. So if the container closes, I want to remove it. So I'm going to pass in the RM flag. And the other options we need are here. Environmental, you can either pass the environmental file and it will read it from there. So you can pass the config.env file as well. And you can also pass individual commands. So you can set them individually. So I'm going to do the first, the latter. So I'm going to pass them individually so that you can see. And the way to pass them is you need to pass them one by one. Okay. So I'm going to set, let's copy it from here. I'm going to set this to code. So this will be the key and this will be the variable. So it's a key, key value match. So like a dictionary. Okay. And the next one is the password. And since we set these to de default and this will be setting automatically to production here, we, we don't need to set in the rest. Okay. okay. Uh, what did I click? What did I click? Sorry, that's wrong. Okay, so that's all we need to start it. The last parameter, as you can see here, is command is run, image, and the image, right? So the image we want to run will be, what name did I set it to? So it will be this one, okay? Let's use that. So I want to run, I want Docker to run this image with the following environmental variables on port mapping here and I want it to delete when it stops. So let's test it out. I'm hoping it ran correctly. So let's read through. So it went in to yarn and went into my package.json and I told it to run this command. So it went and ran concurrently, yarn, docker, client. So it's going to build this. Then it's going to run yarn start. 
so it started this first so that means that means it's see here it started the node mon server and the node mon server has already started and it already connected to database but the client has not been built yet so i'm hoping it to see it again it restart again so as you can see here here it's doing yarn install right resolving packages yeah it's doing yarn install linking dependencies and now it's doing yarn build this one so it's creating an optimized build and here you can see running production the node mon restarted here and it ran the road server again so if everything went correctly and the 3000 should not work okay but the 5000 should and as you can see here so now what we are getting is we are into our production build already and we are running it through the docker now i can close these i can close the whole thing i can and this will still be running because it's running on docker now you can push this image onto the docker hub where where you can later using the pipeline from like jenkins or depending on what ci cd tool you want to use you can later ask the production to pull this image and instantly your new upgraded version uh, or the you can create a pipeline so in case uh, why did i close it so in clay in case you want to run your github and you want every time you do a git commit and git push you want a pipeline ci cd pipeline to start and detect the change and then go and build a new docker container run some before that run some testing and build a new container and you want your production to pull that pull that container and deploy so that's something you can do and which is currently being done so that's something we will cover in our next video so i hope you enjoyed i'll leave the updated file in the link in the description i hope you enjoyed it keep learning